need to take risks so take risks and ignore advice when necessary even good advice it might not be the right advice for you and also to trust your gut and if you really believe that there's something that you should be doing find a way to make it happen and just keep going welcome to mindful and dream podcast where we help you to not decide what's really important whilst chasing your dreams Today's guest is Malika Bose, who is the founder and creative director of The Bollywood Company, which is an elite South Asian dance group based in London. Over the last 10 years, she's overcome many obstacles to now be working with some of the world's most elite brands and clients. Today, the company is thriving, teaching a packed weekly schedule of classes, as well as creating bespoke entertainment packages for clients across the globe. Malika is also choreographed for several Bollywood and Hollywood films and TV shows, such as Dancing on Ice and... Incredibly, in November 2021, her choreography and dances graced Marvel's The Eternals. I really hope you enjoy listening. Welcome, Nilika. It's great to have you on the podcast. It is lovely to be here. Thank you so much for having me in person, not on Zoom. So how I actually found out about Nilika is during the pandemic, she was organising these drive-ins and it was everywhere, all over my Instagram. So I wasn't too familiar with Volleyco before that, but then I was just seeing everywhere that people were posting this big event that she'd organised. And then from that, I started following them as well. And some of my friends are part of it. And now I go to her her classes as well. I know, literally every part of the business we managed to rope you in. Yeah. How was the drive-ins? It was quite a trip, to be honest. It was not easy to put on. It wasn't the obvious choice because I think a lot of people were financially driven and not doing anything at that point because... It's an expense, right, to be working when mm-hmm. when nothing else is happening. And also it's a risk to know if people would come because the advice was not to be going out. But then obviously drive-ins were happening and drive-in cinemas were happening and we took it a step further and we did a drive-in concert. Uh, so, yeah, it started off as mini mm-hmm. cinemas, 50 cars, and then it went to a um, slightly larger concept about 100 150 cars between between somewhere between them and then we moved into the drive in london which is the biggest drive in in the uk 300 cars the mm. next year on the next lockdown so it started quite small but then by the mm. time we were doing bend it like beckham we then built like concepts around drive ins and then so yeah. many people started um following us yeah and the other big thing you're coming up as well is your appearance in The Eternals. Yes, in um, Marvel's The Eternals, my probably biggest ever career highlight. Like, who knows when I'll ever have a credit that big, guys. So um, my first choreography credit on a movie of that scale, a mm. Hollywood movie. So that's well, first of, of many. Let's hope. Let's hope. I have had an assistant <laughs> choreographer credit, um, but not anything like this. And this yeah. is November 5th. Fingers crossed it all goes smoothly. Yeah. And like my scene hasn't been cut, who knows. So from building like this company from like nothing to where it is today. Yeah. What's some common advice you got along the way that you disagree with? I mean, everyone told me not to do this at the mm. beginning. Firstly, I'm not I'm not Indian by heritage. I'm Sri Lankan. I don't have anyone in my family that dances. My parents have two left feet, they'll tell you. No one runs businesses in my family. Like the closest person is my aunt who's like married into the family. She she has a business background, but you know, there's not anyone that I can kind of say was my mentor. So mm-hmm. all things were against me. And I think the older generation who want to protect you uh, always say, follow a career with a path and mm-hmm. You know, there are loads of people that follow careers with parts that are unemployed. So Mm. I don't think that that necessarily is the way to get to a destination by just following a path. You have to have drive. You have to be passionate. You have Mm. to wake up every day motivated um, on days that you can't really find it. So, yeah, that was the advice that I completely would say I didn't take. Mm. Yeah. Was it hard to kind of reject that advice when you're getting all these inputs from different people? Yeah. And how did you kind of manage that? Because I know some people have a similar thing where they're trying to do something new, but the people around them are telling them not to do it. Yeah, I think you don't necessarily have to address the fact that you're not taking their advice. (laughs) Um, But I would always say, okay, that's great. Um, I'll take that on board. But didn't. (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
but yeah, it was it was interesting to see the the transition between like, oh, she's got this little dance company. Mm-hmm. Or did you hear like? My mum's friends would be like, oh, Ramani's daughter is like a dancer. Did you hear? She's doing this and that. And then now like, oh, did you know she's in the Eternals? <laughs> like, yeah. I think people rarely back you when you're starting something. And who knows? I mean, the Eternals is one credit. It doesn't have to be that specific moment. But I think mm-hmm. a lot of people won't back you until it's something that they can identify with. Yeah. Um, but there's been so much more before this point that it would have been great to have their support, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. You mentioned there about like some days where you struggled to have the motivation. Was there any particular instances that were really difficult and how did you come through that and find your balance again? I think the most difficult part in my career, aside from COVID, which has been difficult for all creative artists, um, was coming out of like pregnancy and having a child, especially like quite early on in my career, because as a dancer, your sort of shelf life in a way is somewhat designated designated it's aligned with motherhood yeah. and uh you know a lot of people said how are you going to manage it and then even friends that weren't in dance were like you're not going to keep dancing after you've got a kid are you that's just <laughs> strange i was like yeah i think i will i think i will yeah. um and i i found it was hard to be motivated when people were expecting me not to be um, yeah. And they were like, you can take it easy, you know, you can, you can stop. But what if you don't want to? And what if that's not part of your plan? And, you know, my plan was to just keep going. <clears throat> so, yeah. How did you find that again? So obviously lots of people do give up on dancing once they've got a family and things like that. How did you come back into it again? And during that, obviously with the pregnancy period and like when the child had just been born, mm. how did you manage the business side of that while you... That was all going on. So I had a team that I'd already built and they kind of took over for about three to four months completely where I stepped mm. back from it. But then coming back in, I'm complete control freak. I was like, what has been going on here? Like, where, what is this pricing? How has this been mm. happening? But, you know, you have to sort of draw a line and realise, you know, when you hand something over, yeah. it just has to get done. It might not be your way. And my mum my mm. always said, look, you need to at some point let go of the... Mm let go of the reins and I think getting back into it I couldn't look at what had been I just had to look forward and what the next phase of the company is so it's been eight years now of Bollycoat right eight years of Bollycoat yeah so was that kind of a just like a distinct phase before and after your pregnancy where having that bit of time away I guess might have been able to let you think about the longer term plans and the longer term strategy yeah did you change anything when you came back in terms of that vision I don't know why or how, but the company, I think it's also timing. A Mm. lot of this niche, which Mm. is the South Asian market, and it's the same with other cultures, you Mm. have your moment where it's trendy or it's Mm. cool to be brown or, you know, something happens in the media and, you know, it's that Jaiho effect in a Mm. way. Um, So there are times where you leapfrog off things happening in the media, in the world, global events. Something was happening at that time and my career just kind of skyrocketed. And I would say that that's when we were traveling five to six times a year, doing Mm -hmm. gigs abroad. Um, You know, I've heard the saying that where hard work goes, good luck Mm -hmm. follows. And I definitely think for three or four years, I was solidly, solidly, solidly working. Mm -hmm. Went to have my my little one uh, and then came back and then it was like a catalyst and Mm -hmm. came back and then all the work was was there. So yeah, I think it was just a few things, timing, hard Mm -hmm. work, and then just magics. Yeah. Yeah, I I call them the golden days because it was before COVID, it was when you could travel Mm -hmm. freely, people were spending more money, they Mm -hmm. were enjoying entertainment and entertainment was very highly valued. Like again, now, Post COVID, people want things. They want products that they can see and hold mm. on to. Uh, so I think, in a way, that we're going to have to work a little bit harder to remind people of the value of, mm. of entertainment. It's not that they haven't missed it; they've mm. missed it all the time. But they're so like it's so much easier to be connected to entertainment now by a device. Yeah. So you can stream a show, you can listen to a podcast, you can listen yeah. to uh, Spotify music, but actually buying a entertainment piece, I Mm. don't really feel like people 
remember what that feels like. There are a few. Yeah. I mean, we haven't done too bad on the recovery, but mm. for things to go back to normal, it's going to take a while. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything changed now? Because obviously you've done the drive-ins and I think you mentioned in your story today about you think about doing more of those in the future. Mm. Has it kind of changed your opinions on some of the things or do you want to kind of go back to the way things were? It has completely changed my opinion because when we are the entertainment that are booked by a client, mm -hmm. the hierarchy is obviously very different. Yeah. Whereas when we are the people putting on the show, it's completely a different respect level. It's uh, mm -hmm. the way that people view someone that's doing something versus someone that's being booked to do something is, is very mm -hmm. different. And I think going from the very bottom to the very top it's been it's been a game changer because we're so aware of what it takes. And when now yeah. when someone comes to us with a show and they say, "Look, we simply don't have the budget," I'm like, "So how how is that budget allocated? Mm -hmm. Just tell me a little bit." Because obviously, and they're like, "Oh, it's promotional, and you know, it's mm -hmm. this show, and it'll be great exposure." The word that you know <laughs> an artist dreads is when they use yeah. the drop the e bomb exposure, mm -hmm. and they tell you, you know, everyone that's on board is doing mm -hmm. it for exposure, particularly in TV. Yeah. But you know the cameraman's not doing it for exposure. He's mm. holding the camera. He's being paid to do it. Yeah. Dancers don't get that same respect. And I mm. think it's so difficult to explain to people that if you're dancing behind, for example, an artist, once that work is finished, no one's going to say, who were those two behind that artist? They mm. look for the artist. And then even though we've enhanced the artist's performance, yeah. we're not getting... A secondary benefit out of it we are literally there for our hours we're doing mm. the job and if you want us to do the job to our best we have to be motivated by being paid like any other job but mm. it's difficult because dance is also a recreational activity so because so many people do it recreationally it's where the line is between professional dancers and you know those that do it for fun yeah and obviously the line is obviously just the quality right yeah, and, and the hours of training that we put in to make sure it's a professional product versus, oh, we've had so much fun. There are a few moves wrong in the mm. second verse, but, you know, don't worry, no one noticed. Like, how, how would yeah. an artist feel, you know? And then when they tell us, you know, we can get people that will do it for free or for the exposure, I used to say, oh, but please, and now I'm just like, okay, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Good luck. Enjoy that. Enjoy cleaning yeah. that mess. It's one of the things I've realised as well in business is there's different levels, right? Is that... Yeah. People often come to me for free advice, but me helping them, like I could do it, but then I wouldn't have any of my own time. So yeah. by doing my own business stuff, plus the free stuff, that's my sleeping time that's going. That's my time, my friends and family that's going. Yeah. And that's something I don't think people necessarily understand is that if you're going to do that show for free, that's you not being your kid. It's you not being your family. It's I not literally had you this skipping this family events. Yeah. So I had someone I've, I've been doing private lessons with and yeah. they messaged me asking me to do a recorded video for them this morning. Mm -hmm. I've already done their lesson. And they're yeah. coming again for more lessons. This is extra mm -hmm. time. And boundaries are so important because in creative industries, people don't see boundaries. Yeah. And then also because I'm so open on my social life, they think mm -hmm. on Instagram... If I'm on there posting something about where mm. I am for class or whatever, oh, she's probably free. But that's also part of my business. Like yeah. when I'm posting online, it's part of my brand. Like I don't mm. think people realize not a lot that I do is not part of that branding. Um, mm. It's not like every detail is calculated or strategic. But if I'm out and I'm filming, it's because I'm on my way somewhere or doing something that's related to yeah. my, my product. Um but yeah, I think social media is one of the, the kind of floodgates to leaving yourself almost overexposed yeah. with your time. So alongside that with the people respecting your boundaries, where else are you struggling with your balance at the moment? I think as a mum, I always struggle because whenever I devote time to the business completely, I feel, oh, should I be spending more time with Gigi or you know, vice versa. There have been times where I've spent the whole day off and spent time with her. And then a client's been like, hi, haven't received this. And, you know, we are, we are struggling to go back to how we were before COVID and I can't employ the same number of people I did before. So I think, you know, it, it's always a struggle. Um, mm. However, I think I've realized that balance is probably not always achievable and it's choosing 
um, mm. and making those choices. And then once you've made those choices, being okay with that. So yeah. if someone does tell you you haven't received something, you just apologize and say, I'm so sorry. It won't be won't be today. It will be tomorrow. As long as you're communicating, I think you're good. Yeah. And it's one of those things where most things in life aren't that urgent. Yeah. Like, it's You don't need to reply on the same day. So if it's an event that's happening tomorrow, it's a good idea to reply today. Yeah. But if it's happening in six months' time. I think COVID has put people into over-anxiety, particularly mm. with... Just queries about, will there be another lockdown? Will my event even happen? Are you going to run away with my money? What's your (laughs) refund policy? Like, I'm very clear from the start what all those questions, what the Mm. answers to all those questions are. But I think when people get in that panic mode, they can't find the answers and they're just thinking, oh my God, I'm going to lose everything. Um, Mm. And I think with weddings, it is quite sensitive. So you have to remember that this is a day in someone's life that is going to be kind of the biggest event they'll ever have so you have to empathize and yeah you know you can't just because you have done it a million times before you can't be like oh we've done this loads don't worry about it we'll just turn up yeah <laughs> which kind of sometimes i do want to say but until that confidence comes from them it's quite difficult to like make them feel at ease you just have to keep reassuring them hi everyone i hope you're enjoying the episode so far i want to take a quick break to ask you to check in on yourself there's many people struggling with balance and there's nothing to be ashamed about. The tips that my guests and I share can hopefully help you along the way, but if you already feel overwhelmed or burnt out, it's probably best that you ask somebody for help too. For some, this might be a friend or family member, but others might feel like they have nobody they can talk to. If you're one of these people, check out the link in the show notes. It's for United for Global Mental Health. They've got help plans all across the world with people willing to listen on the other side. It's important to let somebody know how you're feeling. Now, back to the show. Do you find like as you've grown bigger and as you've got the following and social media presence that people are a little bit less worried? No. And honestly, I never say to people like, oh, have you followed us on Instagram or have you checked Mm. me out on this or look at my LinkedIn or anything? Like I I just don't. I I come at it from the perspective they don't know me Mm. because there are also a lot of like frauds out there on on social. And you could be someone who's bought your followers. You could be someone who you know, has bought a blue tick even, because you can do that now. Um, so I think all... I'm going to do that later, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think all you can go on is what you see in front of you. And if they don't feel comfortable with the person they're communicating with, I'm doing something wrong. So, yeah, yeah, I, I try not to... Not, not from your perspective, in terms of the people that are reached you. Yeah, it's a bit no. easier because they can look you up, I guess, before they contact you. There's a few times when they've said, oh, well, we don't want to pay up front, you know. And I just said, look... Here is my registered company number. Yeah. This is company's house. Please feel free to do the research. My accounts are all filed, like, Mm. as you wish. And I think just because, again, with dance, they are used to, like, cash in hand or whatever. And Mm. they always ask, you know, would there be a discount? And I just say, no, like, there's Mm. no discount for anything because we need to live and eat. Yeah. And, you know. Which is fair enough, right? Yeah, exactly. So So I think... Yeah, there's not been any real change from the bigger that we've grown. I think Mm. the quality of bookings has increased, but Mm. you get the same number of confused people that call. (laughs) Definitely. If not more. They're more confused because there's more choice now. A normal day look like for you or do you not have a normal day because there's bookings all over the place? At the moment, there's no normal day structure. Um, Before, it would be sort of office work like I'd say 10 till 3. I don't really start early because I do mum duties for, till about 9, 9.30. And then there'd be sort of email replies and then also just overall brand strategy because we have four classes a week. We're also launching our, our Bungra squad as well. Mm-hmm. So that's a new initiative we're launching. So we'd always look at our products as a whole at the start of the week and my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is a mixture of replying to new business, existing business, and then looking at the, the class and what we're doing with the business as a whole. Then I'd have a few team meetings. My teachers are all sort of experts in their dance style. Mm-hmm. And although they teach individually, we are very much a brand. So they need to know what's going on with the brand. Like, mm-hmm. what's our direction this month? Like, what are our targets? How's everyone doing? And then we kind mm-hmm. of try and bounce off each other and you know, try and help each other. And for example, if my class numbers have been great, 
then I'd say, okay, so this week I'm not really going to talk about my class. It's going to be a push on semi-classical or, yeah. you know, I will look at which teacher wants the support. And then we'll also look at what the new releases are in Bollywood, see mm. what films are coming out. Um, and yeah, a lot of it is connected to the industry that we're passionate mm. about. Um, so yeah, that's what a typical... Yeah. And so obviously Gigi's back at school now. Mm -hmm. Does that make things a lot easier or is it not too different it is much easier because yeah. <laughs> you don't have when you're on a call someone pulling your leg going mummy mummy <laughs> i want to watch this or that or change the channel or she actually does not care like if i'm on the phone she will talk louder and then if i'm answering for example a wedding inquiry like oh that's beautiful what a lovely venue can i come <laughs> it's like no darling you can't come it's an inquiry it's a client yeah. um <laughs> but yeah it's it's interesting and I don't think I'm going to be the first or the last person to run a business with a child. But I think because it's dance, people find it so interesting. Mm -hmm. And the comments that I get like, oh, you got back into shape and you're, I can't believe you're a mum. And, you know, I, you just think, what what do you expect a mum to look like? Like dowdy, mm -hmm. dried out, like on the shelf, like no, no motivation to live other than mm -hmm. her child. I don't want to mm -hmm. be that person. Like. Yeah. I never wanted to be that person and I want, you know, my daughter to look up to me and think she can do everything. She doesn't mm -hmm. have to have to pick whether she's a mum or a dancer. She can... Yeah. Yeah. Do you think at the moment she kind of wants to be like she looks up to you in the dancing in particular and tries to emulate you? A lot? Definitely. She can't she can't actually <laughs> she can't actually dance to rhythm yet. Is it um, skipping a generation because you said your parents? Yes. Yeah. It's... yeah. <laughs> my grandkids will be great. Yeah. Um but yeah, she's not really into dance, to be honest. Mm. She's interested by the business and she, she loves okay. the idea of telling people what to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not so much the dancing. Yeah. It's wasted on her. Oh. What are you looking to, in the future now? Mm -hmm. What do you want your ideal lifestyle to be? Is it going back to that kind of 10 to 3 and doing dance in the evenings? Or yeah. do you want to mix that up? I would love things to go back to how they were. Also the drive-ins that we mentioned earlier to build products, not necessarily drive-ins, but like that, like concerts, awards shows. I've proven to myself that I could do it. And that's mm. what it was always about, proving it to myself, not to others. Because I think if you start a project thinking that you've got to prove it to someone else, you're never going to be satisfied. Yeah. There's always going to be negative comments. And we did mm. get a few negative comments. And because I did it for myself, they didn't bother me. Yeah. So yeah, being able to charge whatever I want, well, what I feel we deserve. Like even now, I don't feel like we're charging what we should be. Um, and then also just helping continually push the industry up and not just, you know, keeping all that good energy for myself. I like to spread that amongst the South Asian dance community as well. So more events that involve different types of dancers and different types of creatives as well would be amazing. Yeah. And looking at the team as well, so you mentioned that you previously hired a few people to work with you mm. is that what you're looking to do again to kind of get rid of some of the maybe day-to-day -day activities from your have play? a team like on standby waiting to be rehired so it, honestly mm. they know that I can't change the way the world's working at the moment yeah if things go back to how they were I'd love they still mm. work on a freelance basis because they, they love the company so much but I know that their ideal would be to, to go back to that situation mm. but it's just it's just not picked up yet yeah. In, in like an ideal world, which kind of parts of your job at the moment would you get rid of or you'd push into somebody else and let somebody else manage that? Oh, the admin. Like, I am mm. not good at admin. Like, mm. you know how long I take <laughs> to reply to like a WhatsApp or whatever. Like, the, the little things that take time for me feel like quite big things because I have got to a stage in my career after 10 years that I don't really do them anymore. And I had mm. a PA full time for three years and to not have one now is really like difficult um so mm. that part I wouldn't do because I think I'm much better at the creative and you know the, yeah. the top line decision making and the planning and strategy and you can't do that at the same time as like placing a delivery order for 10 dancers which now I have to do because yeah. if you don't do them people don't get fed and, and stuff like that so yeah it's it's quite difficult to balance but you know I'm trying to see where we can get projects where I can bring someone in freelance to PA for a few days yeah because it's some of the things what I'm doing at the moment is that I've got the kind of bigger strategic things like I'm going to write a book I'm going to do all this other stuff 
but then at the same time, one person company. So I'm managing all these other little bits and pieces. And what I'm you trying to do... You have to do them as well, yeah. because if you don't do the little bits, you can't work towards the big bits because people are like, oh, they're, they're rubbish. They haven't got back to me on this. So Yeah. And it's what I'm trying to do is build those systems, which I can then palm off. Yeah. And I think that's... Because you said mentioned before as well, like you like to control things. Yeah. So if you've got your process and you can write that down and somebody can follow it. Yeah. It just gives you that confidence, right? Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do too. It's like, for like editing this podcast, I'm doing it myself at the moment. But I want it to be somebody else who does it and it frees up time so much every time. week, right? Yeah. And that's time which I can then do in the bigger picture stuff, like you mentioned. Yeah. So for the people listening today, what's one mindset shift you think they could make that'd make a positive difference to their lives? I would say one thing that I did was learning to take risks. So take risks and ignore advice when necessary. Even good advice, it might not be the right advice for you. And also to trust your gut. And if you really believe that there's something that you should be doing, find a way to make it happen and just keep going. Yeah, is there anyone like you you know in the past as well where they've taken that risk and they're really nervous about it and you help them to go through it and to then chase their dreams too? I guess you yes, see all the time with your dancers, actually, right? Actually, there is someone called Sean who, uh, his name's Sean Thomas and I met him on Instagram and he is a fantastic dancer and he was posting just stuff where you could not see how great a dancer he was and obviously as a mm -hmm. trained dancer and someone who's built my own brand I would find things that he was posting and I'd send them back to him and be like crop this <laughs> second to this second post this as a reel see if it makes a difference and he started yeah. doing a few things like that and he was like wow thanks so much like mm -hmm. why are you doing this for me I'm like because I believe in you mm -hmm. and you know you need to make things happen for yourself. So then lockdown happened and then I started mentoring him. Mm. That's nearly got more followers than I have in <laughs> such a short space of time, but he's grown exponentially because he completely dedicated himself mm. to growing a dance company, basically similar to what Bollyco has um, mm. over in New Zealand and also exponential social growth which is something he as a filmmaker he had a background in filmmaking uh, so it's like dude you've got yeah, yeah. you really should have got all the ingredients here of success and yeah he then just yeah made a great decision to full-time commit to dance he's doing really well his classes went from like four people to 40 and you can't even get a spot in his classes now which yeah. is amazing yeah, it's just that thing, I think, so many people limit themselves because they don't think they can do it, even if other people can see it in them. Yeah. And it's like, we the thing about anybody who got big, right? They're all just normal people. Yeah. Like, they had to start from somewhere, whereas we think, oh, they were born with it, or they came out of, like, the womb with, like, this amazing talent. I was like, no, like, they had to work their way up, and they just had to have the confidence. I think a lot of people don't have that person, though, who believes in them and sees it through to completion I think with me and Sean like even now if he needs anything he can message me and I, I yeah. will help whenever I can and uh, I think that having someone that you can just ask is you know don't underrate that asset if you've got someone in your life that you can literally ask a question at any time doesn't matter mm -hmm. if they're in the industry or not but having somebody to lean on is the biggest thing an entrepreneur mm. could ever ask for and mm. I've had someone my my best friend Sanya who you know her background is in social policy and also in understanding these minority groups and mm. that's not dance that's not fitness that's not any of those things but that's my target audience and actually when mm. I ask her a question the response she gives is so thought out so heartfelt and so mm. insightful that actually that has been such a a benefit to me because yeah. I'm not just asking someone who doesn't really care I think you can ask friends that you go to uni with or that you've had as childhood friends but their responses will be I don't know mm -hmm. give it try like just keep going or whatever but when you are someone who has knowledge in that area mm -hmm. it's like gold yeah for, for an entrepreneur really and I think one thing that's interesting about your relationship with Sean as well is that what people often try to do is find a mentor without really proving why like you should believe in them right whereas it kind of happened in the reverse way and I think it happens a lot with me as well is that if I see somebody who's doing something good and they're trying their best I want to help them yeah for sure like he didn't ask me to mentor him I was after a while of me sending him these messages and telling him yeah. what to do he was like do you want to formalize this and, and I said look I don't have time to build a mentee mm. package like or mentor package yeah. or whatever I, I don't have time to because if I start doing that 
it's going to be another business and mm. I'm doing this from my heart because I believe in you. So yeah. we would literally just keep it quite informal, have a few catch ups here and there. And then I did this thing called the daily, which was daily motivation for people during mm. the first lockdown because we all thought that was fun and games. And we were like, what's going on here? Like everyone's on the house party app. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just make it into a morning club. And he joined that. Um, and we had a few entrepreneurs and celebrities mm. on there. And I think he it gave him that spark to to start thinking, mm. I don't need to just look up to one of these people. I can be one of these people. Yeah. So the first thing I recommended him to do was to read the book. It's not who you are, it's who you want to be. Mm. By, I think it's by Paul Arden. Yeah. It's a very short, easy to read book with just lots of bits of advice. And I, to mm. this day, if I'm feeling unmotivated, I pick up that book and I'll just flick to a page and I'll read a page because it'll mm. give me something. Yeah. Um, and I said, before we start, read this book. And he goes, oh, I don't know if I'll have time. Is it a long book? And so honestly, it's not a long book. You'll yeah. want to read it again. And now he quotes pages from the book every day yeah. on his Instagram. It's, to, it's just a great book. I'd advise it to anyone that, that wants to know about entrepreneurship. Yeah. I think it's such an important point about just, if you do the good work, and like you said about you put in the hard work and then people recognize you later on. Yeah. It's just such an important point about don't just expect people to do it for you. Oh my God. And if he'd come to you at the beginning before ever making a video being like, hi, I want to do this. Like, please tell me what to do. And he didn't do that. He was trying his best and you saw that and appreciated that. And that's why you helped him. But I think in this day and age, everything is so instant that that's why people want things the other way around. Mm -hmm. I was never brought up in this social generation where you would almost want the reward before you put in the work. So for mm. me, it doesn't seem natural. Like I do get DMs daily. Mm. Hi, I'm just starting out. I wondered how I can get representation from Intertalent or a brand mm. like you. I'm like, it's taken me 10 <laughs> years to get yeah. an agent. I did it the other way around. Like I got all my own work and then I went to an agent and then I was like, hey, can I be represented? People mm. who have literally just come out of dance college are looking to be represented by agents that you know, mm. are are very difficult to, to get. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not the person to ask if you mm. want this at this stage in your career. You you absolutely have to put in the work yourself. And even mm. now, after 10 years of doing it, it was not easy. I did get rejected. Yeah. The first time I applied, I did get rejected because mm. they didn't really see where they could place me. And mm. then again, I had to repitch myself and say, mm. look, this is how I would position me. And these are the type of clients I would get. And when they mm. said, oh, are you sure? here is my client list. So yeah. I kind of showed them I'd already done it. So I think mm. to be able to back up what you're selling people is so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been a pleasure to talk to you, Nalika. And you. Where can people hear more from you? Instagram, they can find me on Insta. My handle's at Nalika. And then my company, The Bollywood Co, at The Bollywood Co. And then the website is thebollywoodco.com. And I teach a pineapple every week. So if you just want to Meet me like you did, which I thought yeah. was really cool, actually, that you came to our South Asian Heritage yeah. Month event. So I feel like from that, you really got a feel for what I'm about and what the company mm. is about. So I just love it when people actually engage with the product first uh, before, like, you know, sending me a message. So, yeah, if you want to come down, our company is very, very open to new people. Yep. Yeah. And the final thing to end up on is what's one small thing that's brought you joy recently? Well, my little girl, my Gigi, and just spending time doing things I love, like dance, family, and having a good balance of social and personal life. I think it's been so hard to, to do that the past year. So any moments that I get where I get to experience both, I'm happy. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, I'd love it if you could leave me a five-star review. It really helps to get the message out further. Wherever you're listening, it would be awesome if you could subscribe and to share on your social media channels. If you want to see more of my work and advice, you can find all of the links in the show notes. Thank you again for listening and I hope you have a lovely day.